It isn't right, ma'am. You're wearing yourself out. Oh, the maid and the cook have gone looking for berries, and everything that breathes is enjoying life. Well, even the cat knows how to be happy, slips about the courtyard and catches birds, but, but you hide yourself here in the houses as though you were in a cloister. Yes, truly, by actual reckoning, you haven't left this house for a whole year. And I shall never leave it. Why should I? My life is over. He lies in his grave that I have buried myself within these four walls. We are both dead. <sighs> there you are again. It's too awful to listen to. So it is. Nikolai Mikhailovich is dead. It was the will of the Lord, and the Lord has given him eternal peace. You have grieved over it, and that ought to be enough. Now it's time to stop. Well, one can't weep and wear mourning forever. My husband died a few years ago. I grieved for him. I wept a whole month. And then it was over. Must one be forever singing lamentations? Well, that would be more than your husband was worth. Hmm. You have forgotten all your neighbors. You don't go out and you receive no one. We live, well, you'll pardon me, like the spiders, in the good light of day we never see. Oh, it's as though there weren't any more nice people in the world. But the whole neighborhood is full of gentlefolk. And the regiment is stationed in Riblov. Officers, simply beautiful. Oh, one can't see enough of them. And every Friday a ball. And military music every day. Oh, my dear, dear ma'am. Young and pretty as you are, if you'd only let your spirits live. Well, beauty can't last forever. When ten short years are over, you'll be glad enough to go out a bit and then meet the officers. Huh. Then it'll be too late. Please do not speak of these things again. You know very well that since the death of my dear husband Nikolai, my life is absolutely nothing to me. You think I live but it only seems so. Do you understand? Oh, that his departed soul may see how I love him. I know it's no secret to you, but he was often unjust to me, cruel, and he wasn't faithful. But I shall be faithful to the grave and prove to him how I can love. Therefore, in the beyond, he'll find me the same now as I was until his death. <laughs> What is the use of all these words when you'd so much rather go walking in the garden than order Tabby and Willikin harnessed to the buggy to visit the neighbors? Oh. <laughs> madam, you madam, what is it? For heaven's sake. He loved Tabby so. He always drove him to the neighbors. What a wonderful horseman he was. How fine he looked when he pulled at the reins with all his might. Tobby, oh, Tobby, uh, give him an extra measure of oats today. Yes, ma'am. What is that? I am home to no one. Yes, ma'am. I'll see who's calling. You shall see, Nikolai, how I can love and forgive. My love will die only with me when my poor heart stops beating. And aren't you ashamed? I've been a good, true wife. I have imprisoned myself, and I shall remain true until death. And you, you, you're not ashamed of yourself, my dear monster. You quarreled with me, left me alone for weeks. Oh, ma'am, someone is asking for you, insists on seeing you. You told him that since my husband's death, I received no one. Oh, I said so. But he won't listen. He says it's a pressing matter. I receive no one. Well, I told him that. But he's a wild man. He swore and pushed me, pushed himself into the room. He's in the dining room now. Good. Show him in, the impudent. Yes, ma'am. What a bore people are. What can they want with me? 
Why do they disturb my peace? It is clear I must enter a convent. Yes, a convent. <laughs> um, 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 Fool! Um, you make too much noise. You're an ass. Madam, I have the honor, honor to introduce myself. Our lieutenant in the artillery, retired, country gentleman, Grigory Stepanovich Smirnov. I'm compelled to bother you about an exceedingly important matter. What is it you wish? Your deceased husband, with whom I had the honor to be acquainted, left me two notes, amounting to uh, about 1,200 rubles. Inasmuch, I have to pay the interest to the agrarian bank tomorrow. I should like to request, madam, that you pay me the money today. 1,200? And for what was my husband indebted to you? He bought oats from me. Oh, Lucy, don't forget to give Tobby an extra measure of oats. Yes, ma'am. I'll do it now. If Nikolai is indebted to you, of course I shall pay you, but I am sorry, I haven't the money today. Tomorrow, my manager will return from the city, and I shall notify him to pay you what is due you. But until then, I cannot satisfy your request. Furthermore, Today is just seven months since the death of my husband, and I am not in the mood to discuss money matters. And I am in the mood to fly up the chimney with my feet in the air. If I can't lay my hands on that interest tomorrow, they'll seize my estate. Day after tomorrow, you will receive your money. I don't need the money day after tomorrow. I need it today. I'm sorry. I can't pay you today. And I can't wait till day after tomorrow. But what can I do if I haven't it? So you can't pay? I cannot. <laughs> Is that your last word? My last. Absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you. <laughs> and they expect me to stand for all of that. The toll gatherer just now met me in the road and asked why I was always worrying. Why in heaven's name shouldn't I worry? I need money. I feel the knife at my throat. Yesterday morning, I left my home in the early morning to call on all of my debtors. If even one of them had paid his debt. I worked the skin off my fingers, and the devil knows what sort of inn I slept last night, in a room with a barrel of brandy. And now at last, I come here, 70 verses from home, Hope for a little money, and all you give me is moods. Why shouldn't I worry? I thought I made it plain to you that my manager will return from town, and then you will get your money. I didn't come to see the manager. I came to see you. What the devil, pardon my language, do I care for your manager? Really, sir? I am not used to such language or such manners. I shan't listen to you any further. I shall retire to my chambers. What can one say to that? Moods! Seven months since her husband died. Do I have to pay the interest or not? I repeat the question. Have I to pay the interest or not? The husband is dead and all of that. The manager is, the devil with him, traveling somewhere. Now tell me, what am I to do? Shall I run away from my creditors in a balloon, or knock my head against the stone wall? If I call on Grustev, he chooses to be not at home. Aronsevich has simply, simply hidden himself from me, and I have quarreled with Curzon and came near throwing him out the window. Mustaf is ill, and this woman has moods. Not one of them will pay up, and all because I've spoiled them. Because I'm an old whiner, a dish rag. I am too tender hearted with them. But wait, I'll allow no one to play tricks with me. The devil with them all. I'll stay here and not budge until she pays. <laughs> How angry I am. How terribly angry I am. Every tendon is trembling with anger, and I can hardly breathe. I'm even growing ill. Servant! <clears throat> what is it you want? Bring me kvass or water. 
What are you waiting for? Go! Uh, yes, sir. Well, what can we do? She hasn't it on hand. What sort of logic is that? A fellow stands with his knife at his throat. He needs money. He is on the point of hanging himself, and she won't pay because she isn't in the mood to discuss money matters. Women's logic. That's why I never like to talk to women, and why I dislike it now. I would rather sit on a powder barrel than talk with a woman. Burr. I'm getting cold. Cold as ice. This affair has made me so angry. I need only to see such a romantic creature from a distance to get so angry that I have cramps in my calves. It's enough to make one yell for help. <laughs> Here is your water. Madame is ill and is not receiving. Out! Oh. Ill and isn't receiving. Good day. All right. It isn't necessary. I won't receive either. I'll sit here and stay until she brings me that money. If she's ill a week, I'll sit here a week. If she's a year, I'll sit here a whole year. As heaven is my witness, I'll get that money. She won't disturb me with her mourning or her dimples. I know these dimples. It's awful. Unbearable heat, no money, didn't sleep last night, and now morning dresses with moods. My head aches. Perhaps I should have a drink. Yes, I must have a drink. Servant! What do you wish? Something to drink. As you wish. Look at me, a fine figure. No denying that. Dust, dirty boots, unwashed, uncombed, straw on my vest. The lady probably took me for a highwayman. I was a little imp impolite to come into her reception room in such clothes. Oh well, no harm done. I'm not here as a guest. I am a creditor, and there are no special costumes for creditors. <sighs> Here's your drink, sir. Well, you take great liberties. What? Well, I just was looking at... Whom are you talking to? Keep quiet. Oh, nice mess. This fellow won't leave. And why won't you leave? Oh, Lord, how angry I am. Oh. Angry enough to throw mud at the whole world. I even feel ill. A servant! Oh, Mrs. Popov. Sir... In my solitude, I have become unaccustomed to the human voice, and I cannot stand the sound of loud talking. I beg you, please to cease disturbing my rest. Pay me my money, and I'll leave. I told you once, plainly, in your native tongue, that I haven't the money on hand. Wait until day after tomorrow. And I have also had the honor of informing you in your native tongue that I need the money. Not day after tomorrow, but today. If you don't pay me today, I shall have to hang myself tomorrow. But what can I do if I haven't the money? So you're not going to pay me it immediately. You're not. I cannot. All right. Then I'll sit here until I get that money. You will pay me day after tomorrow? Excellent. Here I stay until day after tomorrow. I ask you, do I have to pay the interest tomorrow or not? Or do you think I'm joking? Sir, I beg you, don't scream. This is not a stable. I am not talking about stables. I'm asking you whether I have to pay the interest tomorrow or not. You have no idea how to treat a lady. No, yes, I have. No, you have not. You are ill-bred, vulgar person. Respectable people don't speak so to ladies. How remarkable! How do you want me to speak to you? In French, perhaps? Madame, je vous prie. Pardon me for having, to distur having disturbed you. What beautiful weather we are having today, and how this morning becomes you. Not at all funny. I think it vulgar. Not at all funny. I think it vulgar. 
I don't understand how to behave in the company of ladies. Madam, in the course of my life, I have seen more women than you have sparrows. Three times I have fought duels for women. Twelve I've jilted. Nine jilted me. There was a time when I was played a fool, used honeyed language, bowed and scraped. I loved, suffered, sighed to the moon, melted in love's torments. I've loved passionately, loved to madness, loved in every key. Chattered like a magpie on emancipation, sacrificed half my fortune in the tender passion. Until now, the devil knows I've had enough of it. Your obedient servant will let you lead him around by the nose no more. Enough. Black eyes, passionate eyes, coral lips, dimples and cheeks, moonlight whispers, soft, modest sights. For all of that, madam, I wouldn't pay a kopeck. I'm not speaking of present company, but of women in general. From the tiniest to the greatest, they are conceited, hypocritical, chattering, odious, deceitful from top to toe, vain, petty, cruel, with maddening logic, and in this respect, please excuse my frankness, but one sparrow is worth ten of the aforementioned petticoat philosophers. When one of when one sees one of the romantic creatures before him, he imagines he is looking at some holy being so wonderful that its one breath could dissolve him in a sea of a thousand charms and delights. But if one looks into the soul, it's nothing but a common crocodile. But worst of all is that this crocodile imagines itself a masterpiece of creation and that it has a monopoly on all of the tender passions. May the devil hang me upside down if there's anything to love about a woman. When she's in love, all she knows is how to complain and shed tears. If the man suffers and sacrifices, she swings her train about and leads him by the nose. You have the misfortune to be a woman, and naturally you know women's nature. Tell me, on your honor... Have you ever in your life seen a woman who is true and faithful? Never! Only the old and deformed are true and faithful. It's easier to find a cat with horns or a white woodcock than a faithful woman. But allow me to ask, who is true and faithful in love? A man, perhaps? Yes, indeed. The man. <laughs> the man! The man, true and faithful in love. Well, that is something new. How can you make such a statement? Men, true and faithful. As long as we have gone thus far, I may as well say that of all the men I have known, my husband was the best. I loved him passionately, with all my soul, as only a young, sensible woman may love. I gave him my youth, my happiness, my fortune, my life. I worshipped him like a heathen. And what happened? This best of men betrayed me in every possible way. After his death, I found his desk filled with love letters. While he was alive, he left me alone for months. It's horrible even to think about. He made love to other women in my very presence. He wasted my money and made fun of my feelings. And in spite of everything, I trusted him and was true to him. And more than that, he is dead and I am still true to him. I have buried myself within these four walls and I shall wear this mourning to my grave. <laughs> mourning? What on earth do you take me for? As if I didn't know why you wore this black domino and why you buried yourself within these four walls. Oh, such a secret. So romantic. Some night a pa uh, will pass the castle, gaze up at the windows and think to himself, here dwells the mysterious Tamra who, for all the love of her husband, has buried herself within the four walls. Oh, I understand the art. What? 
What do you mean by saying such things to me? You have buried yourself alive, but meanwhile, you haven't forgotten to powder your nose. How dare you speak so! Don't scream at me, please. I am not the manager. Allow me to call things by their right names. I am not a woman, and I am accustomed to speak out what I think. So please don't scream. I am not screaming. It is you who are screaming. Please, leave me. I beg you. Pay me the money, and I'll leave. I won't give you the money. <laughs> you won't. You won't give me the money. I don't care what you do. You won't get a Kopeck. Leave me. As I haven't had the pleasure of being either your husband or your fiancé, please don't make a scene. I can't stand it. You are going to sit down? I already have. Kindly leave my house. Give me the money. I don't care to speak with impudent men. Leave. You aren't going. No. 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 Very well. Yes. Lucy, please show this gentleman out. Uh, sir, why don't you leave when you are ordered? What do you want? Who do you think you're talking to? I'll grind you to powder. Oh, good Lord. Oh, oh I'm ill. I need air. Where is Dashka? Dashka! Pelagia Dashka! You're all gone. Oh, I'm ill. Water. Leave. Get out. Kindly be more polite. You are vulgar. You are a bore. A monster. What did you say? I said you're a bore. A monster. Permit me to ask, what right do you have to insult me? What of it? Do you think I am afraid of you? And you think because you're a romantic creature, you can insult me without being punished? I challenge you. Oh, oh, merciful heavens. Water. We'll have a duel. Do you think because you have big fists and a steer's neck I'm afraid of you? I allow no one to insult me. I make no exception because you're a woman, one of the weaker sex. Bore. 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 It is high time to do away with old superstition that is only the man who is forced to give satisfaction. If there's equity at all, let there be equity on all things. There's a limit. You wish to fight a duel? Very well. Immediately. Immediately. My husband had pistols. I'll bring them. Oh, what a pleasure it will be to put a bullet in your impudent head. The devil take you. I will shoot her down. I am no fledgling, no sentimental young puppy. For me, there is no weaker sex. Oh, sir, I'm on my knees to you. Have mercy on me, an old woman, and go away. You have frightened me to death already, and now you want to fight a duel? A duel. That's equity, emancipation. That way sexes are made equal. I'll shoot her down as a matter of principle. What can a person say to such a woman? The devil take you. I'll put a bullet in your impudent head. What can one say to that? She was angry. Her eyes blazed. She accepted the challenge. On my honor. <laughs> it's the first time in my life I've ever saw such a woman. Oh, sir. Go away. Just go away. That is a woman. I can understand her. A real woman. No shilly-shallying, but... Fire, powder, and noise! It would be a pity to shoot a woman like that. Sir, go away! Here are the pistols. But before we have our duel, please show me how to shoot. I have never had a pistol in my hand before. Oh, God, be merciful and have pity upon us. I'll go down and get the gardener and the coachman. Why has this horror come to us? Okay, you see, there are different kinds. There are special dueling pistols with cap and ball, 
But these are revolvers, Smith & Wesson, with ejectors, fine pistols. A pair like this would cost at least 90 rubles. This is the way to hold the revolver. Those eyes. Those eyes. A real woman. So I hold the revolver like this? Yes, that way. Then pull the hammer back, so and then you aim. Put your back up, put your head back a little. Just stretch your arm, please. So then press your tr finger on the on the trigger, like or on the thing, well, like this, and that is all. The chief thing is this: don't get excited, don't hurry your aim, and take care that your hand doesn't tremble. It isn't well to shoot inside. Let's go into the garden. Ah, oh, yes. I'll tell you now, I'm going to shoot into the air. That's too much! Why? Because... Because, uh... Well, that's my business. You are afraid! Yes. Oh, no, no, my dear sir. No flinching. Please follow me. I won't rest until I put a hole in that head I hate so much. Are you afraid? Yes, I'm afraid. You are lying. Why won't you fight? Because. Because uh, I... I like you. <laughs> you like me? How dare you say you like me? Now go. Listen. Are you still angry? I was mad as the devil, but please understand me. How can I express myself? Uh, the thing is, like this, such as things are, now it's my fault you owe me money. I like you. Do you understand? I, I'm almost in love. Leave! I hate you. Lord, what a woman. I never in my life have met one like her. I'm lost, ruined. I've been caught like a mouse in a trap. Go, or I'll shoot. Shoot. You have no idea what happiness it would be to die in the sight of those beautiful eyes, to die from the revolver in this little velvet hand. I'm mad. Consider it and decide immediately. For if I go now, we shall never see each other again. Decide. Speak. I am a noble, a respectable man. I have an income of 10,000. I can shoot a coin thrown into the air. I own some fine horses. Will you be my wife? I'll shoot. Oh, my mind is not clear. I can't understand. Uh, servant, water! I have fallen in love like any young man. I love you. I love you as I have never loved before. Twelve women I've jilted, nine jilted me, but not one of them did I love as I love you. I am conquered, lost. I lie at your feet like a fool and beg for your hand. Shame and disgrace. For five years I haven't been in love, and I've thanked the Lord for it. Now I am caught, like a carriage tongue and another carriage. I beg for your hand. Yes or no? Will you? Fine. Wait a minute. Well? Nothing. You may go. But wait a minute. No. Go on. Go on. I, I hate you. Or no. Don't go. Oh, if you knew how angry I was. How angry. Oh, my finger has become swollen from this revolver. What are you standing there for? Get out. Farewell. Yes. Go. Why are you going? Wait. No go. Oh, how angry I am. Don't come too near. Don't come too near. Come no nearer. How angry I am with myself. Fall in love with a like a schoolboy, throw myself on my knees. 
I've got to chill. I love you. This is fine. All I needed was to fall in love. Tomorrow I have to pay my interest and the hay harvest has begun. And then you appear. I can never forgive myself. Go away. Take your hands off me. I hate you. You. This is... Right where you belong. In my arms. Oh. Merciful heavens.